Welcome to another interview in, I gave this video series a name, the I and Thou video series. Okay. <laughs> what do you think of that name? I love it. I love it. Uh, so I have a, a notebook and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to read to you something from my notebook and okay. I want to see if it inspires you. Oh, okay. Sounds good. All right. I have a feeling it's not going to take much to inspire you. <laughs> okay, this is nice. This is very nice. Uh, all right, here's something I wrote in my notebook the other day. Okay. Sometimes something that is not said contains meaning. Yeah. Let me give you an example. My friend, he wrote... Oh, first I should introduce you. Okay. This is Bernice Turner. Hi. <laughs> now, often when people are introduced, they have... They're given a long list of things that they do mm -hmm. and accomplish accomplishments that they have made. But I do not know all of the things you have done and oh. all the accomplishments you've made. Oh. So maybe it'll come up during our discussion. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. That sounds a good way to do it. Okay, so let me tell you about this. Some, sometimes something that is not said contains meaning. So my friend, he wrote a book. All right. Mm -hmm. And it, it's about the Beatles. Okay. Wow. Okay. All the records that they have ever produced. Mm -hmm. And he shows the, the album. Okay. And then he, he tells you what he thinks of the album and what went into the making of the album. Well, he consulted with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. One particular person gave him a lot of consultation. Okay. So... When the book got published, he put his name at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, thank you to so-and-so for all the help you gave me in making this book possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then they were having a discussion uh, through text on Facebook. Okay. Private text. And he said, uh, oh, I sent you a copy of the book. And he says, oh, yeah, I got it. And he said, uh, let me tell you about uh, this chapter that you wrote. And he said, okay. And then he said, no, I also want to tell you about this other chapter that you wrote. And he says, okay. And then he finally said, well, didn't you notice that I dedicated the book to you? And he said, yeah, but I still want to talk about this oh. other chapter. <laughs> now, see, what he did not say contained meaning. Mm -hmm. He didn't say thank you. Right. He didn't say, I feel honored. Exactly. And uh, I think that's an interesting part of communication. Mm -hmm. Like, not, it's not only what we say, but sometimes it's what we, we do not say. say. Yeah. 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 And um, uh, being a person who believes they're meant to encourage people and things along that line. I think sometimes things happen to us in life to see if we really mean what we say, okay? Because it's just like some people, they'll look at other folks, why they, why they get away with that and why they get away with this and how come I do the same thing and I can't get away with it or da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And as you well know, I'm a spiritual practitioner. I'm not there yet. I share with people, if I do 30 to 40 percent, I consider it good. I like to do the 60, 70, but if I do 30, 40. So, and, so there's the ideas you profess and right. the ideas you live. Exactly. And you would like them to meet if exactly. possible. And sometimes situations will come for those who are of a spiritual practice. It's just like a parent with children. And you agree to be a child to a certain practice or belief. Um, a parent will sometimes allow circumstances to take place in a child's life to see if they've learned particular principles. And sometimes, just like what you were saying, the gentleman put a thank you in it. And of course, our, I'm not going to say baser nature, our medium nature 
would like for what we do that we think is good to be acknowledged. But at the same time, why did you really put that in there? If it was truly to thank him, whether he acknowledge it or not, if you have a particular spiritual practice or essence or whatever, it would be nice. But as hard as it is for me to say it, you really shouldn't take offense that he didn't acknowledge the thank you. If you're genuinely saying, I'm grateful this person was in my life and he helped me with the book and he gave me a lot of insight, where the other the gentleman may think, my job is to continue to give you even more insight of what you've done because from where he's coming from, it, he may have the attitude, well, yeah, I, I'm glad you thanked me. That's all nice and sweet and everything, but let's get back to this chapter here and this chapter there. That's more important to me. And um, I found out for myself, that's something I really had to think about. Why am I do, why do I do whatever it is I do? And I have to admit, one of the good things about being on Facebook was, um, as you know, I'm into different spiritual things, but I believe there's one universal positive practice, but it can take different roads to address specific areas of the world, physically speaking. So in um, understanding the Jewish practice of Kabbalah, they teach a principle of on Facebook, I saw this video where there's two women. There's a, a man that's going through a hard time. Both women put money in his hat to help him out. And the one woman, she puts money in, but it's based on fear. I'll give money so that hopefully A, B, C, and D won't happen to me. Whereas another woman gives the money, and she gives the money simply on the base, you and I are one. So I'm just going to, I purpose to bless you. Not a fear-based action, but just an action of, I do. And to a certain degree, that's a hard principle to comprehend. But in the Jewish perspective, that's what the word holy means. It's not dressing in white, bun pulled back real tight and all that kind of stuff. It's about similar to Buddhism, where you do a good deed without any expectations of return. So thinking about you know what you said there and especially for those of us who are involved in different things um, and I'm not saying this because you're here but it's just a fact you do what you do and that has hit me over the years going back from when I um, hosted the screening room which is when I first met you mm -hmm. um, and you know Sue Marie was coming in and recording and I got to meet you and got to meet different artists and um, Rose, being appreciative of Rosemary Cothy because prior to that I did the I, I'm act, an artist performance artist mm -hmm. started at the African Culture Center you're grateful for your teacher you do a lot of things for other people you call yourself playing it forward but can you really play it forward and let it go just like the woman the second woman who put the ten dollars in the man hat without the expectation of I, I want to make sure I'll never be poor, or I'll be never be in his place. So um, that's one of the biggest challenges of the human spirit. Can I do something? And I don't even like to say let go, because I would say liberally, earnestly, truthfully giving openness. I like to take words and then break them down mm -hmm. each letter. But even in that, it was just as simple, simple as do the act and move on. And going back to that thank you, save the thank you and genuinely mean it, but have no expectation on how somebody will respond to it. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> What's the secret of dealing with people who um, are, are hard to deal with? Oh, I've been going through that because one of my things for 2017, you know, um, uh, I'll be 60 in 2017. Uh -huh. And the whole thing for me is as I mature, I like to be more skillful in living my life and also 
being skillful in a good way towards others. Mm-hmm. And one time, I hope this kind of address it. One time I went to help somebody do something. Mm-hmm. And as you know, I'm a, not only a practitioner of Buddhism, but a believer in Jesus the Christ. Mm-hmm. And and, uh, and and in the process of being a believer, just like with technology, you read the books, you read the manuals, you find out what you believe all these things capable of doing. Mm-hmm. Well, I read the Bible, the Talmud, and the Bhagavad Gita, and then some of the sutras. And in one of the scriptures in the New Testament, it says, even give your enemy a glass of cold water and you will heap coals on his head. Okay. So I got ready to do something, and that was not my intent in helping this person. But in the process of getting ready to help them, there was an unction. No, it was the Holy Spirit for me. Mm-hmm. And it said, why are you sending that person to hell? And I said, what do you mean I'm sending this person to hell? I just, I'm just helping them. They said, Vernice, how much have you done for this person? And I said, well, you know, I've done quite a bit, but I'm blessed and, you know, you looked out for me and there's been a lot of good people in my life. So, I'm, But how often have you helped this person? And I said, quite a bit. I said, leave it alone. It's like, oh. And that's been one of the things I've been finding out and engaging with hard people. And I don't even like to, so much to call them hard people as I call them lost souls. Um, And I say that so I can still be compassionate towards them. So I've learned in action, just like the earlier statement about what's not said. Mm. This kind of builds on that principle. Mm -hmm. Whereas I have a hard time saying no. And I share with people the importance of giving people words to work with. So they can still be honoring of themselves and honoring of the world in which they live and how they pray to walk through it. So I like the words, I was given several sentences. I understand, I hear you, I know you and the good Lord are working out. (laughs) (laughs) So when I'm dealing with a hard person or somebody who is navigating away, but I'm seeing however I engage with them, it's not helping them along their journey. When they say something, I hear you. When something else might be said, I say, I understand. Especially when it comes to a point that I realize no matter what I say, they're not going to receive it. So instead of throwing my hands up in the air and getting aggravated and walk away, I say, I understand because genuinely I do understand. And I found out the big thing was so many of us, we don't understand words because if we understood them, they would help us so much as we engage with different situations. And as I shared with somebody, to understand don't mean I approve or I agree with what the person is saying. Mm. But I can choose to allow myself to see what's underneath them and what they're standing on. Mm. So that doesn't mean I agree what they're standing on. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean I agree what's underneath them. But I don't have to judge them. So I can generally say, I understand. And then when I come to saying, um, I know you and the good Lord will work it out. Or for some people who the word Lord is kind of uncomfortable. And the word Lord for me, when I found out what it meant in the Hebrew, author and finisher. I was like, wow. Because when you write a book Mm -hmm. or whatever, you have the author who sets up the text and the story and, and everything. And so I, when I say, Lord, that's the author and the writer of this whole creation. But yet my role, because as a writer would say, sometimes the character takes over and the character is writing itself. So I can say, you and the Lord can work it out. That which, who, that who, the who, who created you mm. and you, y'all need to get together. Because I can see if, as, if it's a hard person that I have engaged with over time and I've gotten to see that they're resistant to whatever I have to say, the best gift I can give them is the space to work it out on their own. Not so much on their own, but within the circumstances and the confines of their belief system. Mm. Because if I'm constantly there trying to correct them, trying to straighten things out and so forth and so on, 
they'll never get to know what they're capable of doing, quote unquote, on their own. Mm. So I'm, I, I understand when the Buddha say, give the cow a big feel. Don't c- try to tell the cow where to go in the field. Just <laughs> So that, that's for me is one of the, I kind of wish I knew that earlier because my grandmother was one of those who I understand why she said what she said in the sense of you're more fortunate if you're more blessed and you're supposed to do more. Where I'm grateful that through prayer, meditation, and studying, no, it's for me to pause, get in touch, am I to do anything about that? And if so, what is it? And I now find out it's not always about me actually doing something. It's enough to raise it up, not just let it go, but really purposefully meditate because I've been a caregiver over the years, as you know. Mm -hmm. Eight years ago, my husband passed over Mm -hmm. and I have an aunt, sad to say, only a few years older than me in a nursing home Mm -hmm. who I've had to step back from. You mean it was stressful taking care of her? You know, I'll be honest, it wasn't stressful taking care of her, but it seemed like I was giving her stress, Hmm. okay? Um, It got into a situation where I would encourage her, you know, go down from your apartment, please walk around your community room so you're still able to walk Mm -hmm. and your body won't atrophy. And sad to say, because of her disability, she allowed that to supersede wisdom. Mm -hmm. So, and I have to also believe it's a fear factor you know for so many people especially when they get older they don't know the job circumstances or whatever so when they're in a situation where some needs are being met they may feel well what do I do if I so I was like go down and walk around but sad to say the day she chose to get up and walk around she fell Mm. cracked the ribs Mm. ended up in rehab and then she wouldn't do her blood work she refused to do her blood work. She refused to do her blood work, so now she's in a nursing home. So it didn't occur to her by refusing to do her blood work, she was harming herself. Exactly. Because the doctors, and I can understand that they could say, you know what, because she was diabetic. She's, she is diabetic. And, so she um, might be eating the wrong foods and not realize it. Exactly, and she had to do her test every day. And with blood being the situation of what it is nowadays, mm. um, safety insurance, they prefer the patients to do it themselves. And she was fortunate enough to have 24-hour care, mm. have somebody willing to do the blood work with her, but she would not do it in a clinic so she could be released. Mm. So for the safety sake of the institution, she's now at the age of 67, 68 in a nursing home. Hmm. You're talking about dealing with a hard person. Yeah. And so when I went to visit her, she got mad with me because there were certain things I was trying to navigate through and she told me, go. Hmm. So I said, there was a time I would have fought with her. No, I'm here. You're my mom's sister. You're the only one left. You know, it's my Christian duty to, you know, try and get you to see and understand. Mm-hmm. But I realized the best gift I could give her was to step back. And then people may say, well, and I have unctions to go and see her just because, you know, I care. I know her. It's my aunt. Da, 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 da. I see her contemporaries out in the world living life, enjoying and doing the things that I would have loved to see her doing. Mm -hmm. But here's another thing the divine said to me. When other people go to see her, if she asks for you, that's the time for you to go back and see her. Mm. But if she doesn't ask for you, don't go in there. And then she turns around and do something that's damaging to her karma because you felt like I still need to go see her anyway. Okay. So that's another thing dealing with hurt people Mm -hmm. is um, now I haven't pulled back my faith and praying that somehow someone's one day, even if she doesn't come out of the space, she'll be able to engage more skillfully in that space. Mm-hmm. Because when I was a kid, I used to be part of Christian Endeavor. Is so that, I was that some kind of a group. Yes, that was a youth group, and you went out and you did shows: Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving. Remember State no. State Hospital yeah. over there on Forest Lawn? Remember? I don't know if you oh, yeah, had yeah, this yeah. happen when you were a kid. If you were bad, if you don't be good. I'm going to take you over to the state hospital and get a dollar for you. (laughs) 
okay? So after, and, and at the time I didn't like doing it, but being older, I'm glad I was made to think of others and be considerate of others. Mm. So one of the advantages of having gone through that, not only giving me the spirit and the confidence to go into a nursing home and not be turned off by this, that, and the other, but also seeing the difference you know, because they have, bing I'm not saying it's perfect, true enough, but they have bingos, they have movie nights, they have engagement, a lot more different mm -hmm. than back in the day mm -hmm. when I would go. So I'm finding out the more I keep myself open to positive things, mm -hmm. like Jesus said, you don't go looking for signs because that can lead you. As you know, Jonestown Massacre, mm -hmm. sad to say, people who went there, they didn't study their Bible where Jesus says, don't go any place somebody tells you I'm at. Hmm. He says, no, when I do return, it would be like thunder and clouds in the sky Then all people will know that I've returned. So, and to me, that's the importance of studying scripture. So you can't be duped mm -hmm. by others. But in dealing with hurt people, mm -hmm. we can allow ourselves to be educated how to engage with them. I'm sorry for going no, on, keep going. <laughs> on um, about that because that's been a big thing for me mm -hmm, is learning. Stay sensitive. Okay. This next thing I wrote in my notebook has to do with ethics. Mm-hmm. Now, this is an interesting little story, and then you tell me what is the best thing to do in this situation. Okay. okay? I'll try. <laughs> a burglar is planning on robbing a house. Okay. So he waits until he thinks there's no one home. Mm -hmm. And he breaks the window. And he leans inside before he climbs in the window to see what's there. And there's a woman lying face down on the floor. And he thinks, I'm not going to break into this house because if that woman's dead... And I get caught, they're going to say, she saw me, she had a heart attack, and I'm going to get blamed with murder. Okay. So he just runs away without doing anything. Okay. Now, the neighbor sees the burglar. Okay. And he says, what's going on? And the guy breaks a window, he looks inside, what's going on? So the neighbor comes, and he looks in the window, and he sees the woman on the floor, and she, her furnace was not working properly. And when he broke the window, the carbon monoxide came out and the woman mm -hmm. starts coming back to life mm -hmm. again, you know? So the neighbor, he runs and he goes inside the house and the woman revives and she's okay. Mm -hmm. And the neighbor says, boy, that was really a good Samaritan. He saw you lying there and he broke the window and he ran away without getting thanked. So he says, I think I know who it is. So he tells the police about this good Samaritan. The police go and see the guy and they mm -hmm. say, sir, we want to think, you know, we want to commend you because, you know, mm -hmm. you broke that window. You saved that woman's life. Now, if you're the burglar, mm -hmm. do you say to the police, mm, I was really there to rob the place? Mm -hmm. Or do you hold yourself up as a role model for the evening news and say, well, sometimes, you know, you have to make hard decisions. Mm -hmm. What's the best thing for the burglar to do? I would take the middle path. <laughs> That's why I love Buddha. Okay, don't veer to the right, don't veer to the left, go straight in the middle. And What does he say? Okay, and in the meantime, he could say, you know what, gentlemen, officers, thank you for um, coming and letting me know that. And please tell the neighbor, I really appreciate it, but no fanfare is needed. I'm just glad the woman is okay. And then go to his room, fall on his face, and say, God, forgive me, and thank you for saving me from getting my behind busted, okay? <laughs> That's what you do, because I'm not going to lie. I love what it, like in Proverbs, where the Lord said, if you took your coat and you put a wage on it or whatever, and you realize you did something out of order, go back and get your coat and repent, okay? Or as Buddha say, karma is not definite. If you know you planted an incorrect seed, go and dig it up before it has a chance to take root. And you don't have to make big fanfare of it. Because to repent means to turn your heart around, to turn your attitude. It's, it, sometimes it's not about making a big grand that, oh, police officer, I really have to admit I was going to go in there and rob the woman, but I thought she had died. Or the other one, oh, yes, officer, I just knew I had to break the window. No, it could be that. 
okay, officer. Thank you very much. No, no fanfare is needed. I'm really glad everything worked out for the lady. Tell the neighbor thank you and close that freaking door and get on your face and thank God for his grace. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> middle path, middle path. <laughs> okay, this next thing I wrote has to do with uh, the culture we live in. Yes. Okay? In 2009, uh, the commercials on a half-hour show mm -hmm. were 14 minutes and 27 seconds. For I'm sorry, for every hour, they had okay. 14 minutes, 27 seconds were the commercials. All right. Last year. Okay. It's been bumped up to 15 and a half minutes. Right. Now there's 112 million people who watch TV. What is this doing to their minds? Oh, baby, making them shorter and less in that place to concentrate on serious information. I mean, the whole recent thing we've gone through in the past year and a half, people not being in that place to absorb and focus. Yeah. Cause, and it's almost like the candy bar. Okay, we want to keep it at the same price, but it's getting smaller or the can of tuna fish gets smaller. But hopefully most folks won't pay no attention to that. At the same time, you know, things cost and money cost and I, 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 I'm of two minds of that okay because so many of us we've been programmed wanting things for free or wanting things for nothing or wanting things to be dirt cheap but here's a perfect story I went to buy a pair of shoes yeah and Lord knows you know I got a ton of shoes so it's not like I need another pair of shoes but I just like my shoes and so I was upset about the price for them and Lord said, excuse me, Bernice. I said, yes. He said, you like getting paid a decent wage every hour, don't you? I said, yes, I do. He said, well, that person who's making that pair of shoes, don't they deserve a decent wage? I was like, wow, yeah. So even though the commercial time, 14, uh, 14 minutes, mm -hmm. and it's up to 15 minutes, but we want free TV, we want to be able to watch the program, because what you got going on now, people want to stream so they don't watch any commercials. And then I'm at a disadvantage slash advantage, because being a consumer and having had a business of my own, and know everything that goes into having a business, the insurance, the medical, the this, the licenses, the taxes, the, the don't get me wrong now, because when you got somebody getting paid $40 million, oh, who is it, Philippe Dimon of Viacom getting paid $70 million to leave the con company, now that's highway robbery. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when you got the other end, where you got workers fighting against each other, oh, he worked at the automobile plant, and he getting paid so much money per hour, and I'm out here working, and I'm getting paid only half what he get paid, and da da it the, the whole commercialism got us all at each other's throat mm. compared to being able to step back and say, what's fair? What's in our all best interest? Because I don't mind them running the extra 15 minutes. I don't like commercials per se, but now that I know what it takes to keep the TV program that I like to watch on TV, mm -hmm. It, sometimes knowledge is a dangerous thing because it makes your brain explode <laughs> if you're not careful. Because when you think of everything that's involved, then it's not good that there's that many commercial, uh, that more time of commercial because then people attention span on serious stuff is contracted. But at the same time, you know, the business got to try to make the money because the margins is getting tighter. And just real quick, um, with my husband having passed over, I've been in that place to handle a lot of the things that he used to handle. Mm. And that includes being genuinely aware of our financial circumstances. Because when you've been blessed, you got an extra responsibility to handle God's stuff that he has blessed you with even more efficiently mm. and even more mindfully. And that's not to say you're not to have nice things but as he says in his scripture the love of money not money the love of money mm -hmm. is the root of all evil mm -hmm. being possessed by things rather than you appreciating the things you have but it costs money 
because I look at the stock market. Oh, Ford only made a 7% profit rather than 15% profit. So we're going to beat it down um, from $11 a share to $8 a share. Then Ford said, okay, I got to lay off 300 people because that'll make the price of the stock go up because people forgot stock is investment. It's not.